Wow. There is no way I can compete with that. Um, this is a, a wonderful opportunity. It is an absolute celebration. And it all starts with you in this room, but more importantly, the other 3,000 participants that answered the questionnaire that you engaged in the process. Because you know what? We could dream and we can write, but unless we get participants, it doesn't matter. And so I want to say to all them who are not here today, a thank you. <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm going to embarrass Sean, because I can. Uh, when we started, and she is a code lead on a core in our large uh, NJX grant, and she really manages community engagement. And I had no idea the depth and breadth and the impact that community can have until I've met you all and met Shauna. And I remember being on the call and an RFA, that's a request for applications, came from NIH. And it was the Radix up, let's reach out to the underserved minorities and enhance testing across the state. And as I was reading it, I said, my gosh, this is written for us. Of course, I was talking to all my colleagues who were completely pulling their hair out and said we had no extra time to write this grant. That's no possible way we could ever get it done in four weeks. This is a big grant, as you know, with lots of moving parts. And I said, well, we got to compete. So my colleagues were on the call, Emily Barrett, Don, uh, Dan Horton. Uh, at that time, Emily Barrett also, and Shauna was on, and I said, who could be the PI on this? And you could heard a pen drop on the phone. And it's one of those things, you know how you volunteer, right? You volunteer by stepping back, and the one person who doesn't step back gets hired. And so we all looked at Shauna and said, it's got to be you. And, and, and at that point, we said, you know, we're going to help. We're going to help. Well. There's a lot of people who say they're gonna help and never lift a pen, but in this team, we were shoulder to shoulder. It was such an endeavor that by the time she would write something and send it around within the hour to her chagrin came the revisions. <laughs> and we said, what's next? But the point here is that we're a team. We are an absolute team and we had one goal and that goal Nationally, nationally, we have exceeded all expectations. Jersey's on the map at NCATS, that's the institute that funds the CTSA and funds NJX, and I can tell you that we have become the paradigm for reaching out and getting work done through community. So, <clears throat> I'm so proud to be a part of this. It was a thrill for me. I see this as the beginning, because I can guarantee you there are more projects coming in each and every one of our community-based organizations. I'm gonna reach out and ask. We did it before, let's do it again, but do it 10 times better. And I know you'll deliver, and I think we are gonna impact on research and healthcare delivery across New Jersey. That's where our heart is. That's who we represent, our constituents and participants. And we want to do that, understanding their needs so we could meet them with research. It is my honor and privilege to introduce my boss. <laughs> um, and he's an amazing man, truly. He had gotten a uh, bachelor's degree in molecular biophysics and biochemistry at Yale. Then went to Johns Hopkins to get his medical doctorate. And I guess the East Coast was boring, right, Brian? Because then you went west. And he went west and he conquered the west uh, by getting uh, first a fellowship there and doing a lot of his clinical epidemiology. 
in which case he figured, well, I'm done here on the West Coast. Let me get back to the East Coast and get my MPH at Penn. And I had the honor and privilege of being at Penn for 27 years and, and knew, knew Brian for 25 of those years. Um, he's truly, truly the father of ph uh, pharmacoepidemiology. That's a long word to describe. He can predict whether you're gonna respond to a drug before you get the drug. That's a big deal. I can't tell you how many people he's trained because his trainees are his legacy. Beyond all the publications, he's touched all of us in a way that we are privileged to carry that mantle. He came here to Rutgers about eight years ago, and he was the inaugural chancellor for RBHS. He oversees eight biomedical schools, uh, probably twice as many institutes, and a gazillion people. And he always has time to answer your email, even though it's at 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> and he's always there. He's also the executive vice president uh, for uh, Rutgers Health. An amazing individual that actually recruited me five and a half years ago from Penn to carry forward a mission. So what I'd like to do now is have Brian come forward and thank him for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you everybody, thank you Ray. Um, I only wish my mother was here to hear it all. <laughs> but, uh, but why aren't you working on your next grant? <laughs> so. Um, th thank you, Ray. Uh, greetings to all of our guests. And, and I send greetings also from Thaddeus Diggs, who, who uh, uh, as uh, was mentioned, wasn't able to be here today because his, his family has COVID. He doesn't yet, but he will soon. So <laughs> uh, um, the, uh, he decided to, to, to um, protect all of us by, by not coming. Today's event is a celebration of the strengths of community partnerships um, and how these partnerships can lead to improving human health. Our partners come from local, state, and federal government to community action groups, to hospitals serving Essex, Passaic, Middlesex, and Union counties. Your partnership with Rutgers is crucial to helping us reduce health disparities in our state and ultimately realize a healthier New Jersey. More than 22 organizations have worked together uh, on NJ Heroes 2 with the goal of expanding access to COVID testing for underserved populations. As we all know, the impacts of the pandemic have been disproportionately severe for communities of color. From the very beginning of the pandemic, Rutgers has sought your partnership to help reduce this disparity. Our commitment to our communities will not end with COVID-19. Um, in fact, we have embedded it deeply in our new strategic plan, which was just issued called One RBHS, The Way Forward. Community engagement is codified as a central mission-based goal in our strategic plan moving forward. Also, Sean is doing. <laughs> Yeah, um, as, as I whispered to her when Ray was talking about that story, I said, you wanna make sure something's done, you give it to somebody who's maximally overcommitted. <laughs> so, um, uh, the objectives of this goal, uh, of our strategic plan, are meant to ensure that as a public institution, we are engaged with our local and global communities to advance research, education, and clinical care through service that addresses relevant community health challenges and needs. By engaging with these communities um, in ongoing collaborations, we can work together to improve and sustain health. Another important aspect of community engagement is to expose students and trainees to learning opportunities that expand their consciousness of their impact on the communities that they serve and increase awareness of the cultural and societal factors that affect health. Throughout the pandemic, RBHS, Rutgers Biomedical and Health Sciences, um, has sought to be an innovative and reliable partner for the state of New Jersey and our Commissioner of Health, who's uh, here as well, Judy, um, um, and Rutgers alum, um, who you'll hear from a little bit later. NJ Heroes 2 is also a great example of how our research enterprise helps us contribute to the well being of our state. NJ Heroes 2 is working with trusted local organizations, with all of you, to better understand COVID 19 testing patterns 
uh, among underserved and vulnerable populations to strengthen the data on disparities in infection rates, disease progression, and outcomes, to develop strategies to reduce the disparities in COVID-19 testing. My thanks and congratulations go to our six principal investigators on this project. You've already heard part of and seen lots of pictures of, but Shauna Hudson, Ray Panettiere, um, the, the, uh, Manny Jimenez, all, all of whom are here, Emily Barrett, uh, Marty Blazer, and of course, D Diane Hill, who is almost impossible to follow. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad at least Ray b was between us. <laughs> yeah. In addition to this program, RBHS researchers have been prolific in fighting the pandemic in, um, in general. From February 2000 to January 2022, RBHS has surpassed $75 million in extramural sponsored research activity related to COVID-19. All money that we brought in from, uh, uh, from Washington into the state. To date, we've secured 28 clinical trials representing $23 million, 427 proposal submissions representing total potential project cost of $1.2 billion, 164 awards representing $75 million with a projected multi-year total of over $200 million. But research alone won't be enough to solve the great challenges of our time as we move from the peak of the pandemic to our new normal uh, as we are now all experiencing with our different colored, uh, uh, the, the uh, lanyards, thank you, uh, different colored lanyards. We, we need your continued support. And my hope is that we continue to grow our partnerships and create more opportunities to celebrate together so that we can work together to ensure a fairer and healthier New Jersey. Thank you.